My name is Scott Landis and I'm the president of Greenwood, an educational nonprofit that connects sustainable forest producers with a talented network of woodworking entrepreneurs and world-class designers. It's a whole value chain approach, linking wood from managed forests with artisan producers, quality designs, and ultimately good markets. We aim to deliver the highest value from every harvested tree to the people who live closest to the forest. After a tree has been felled, transforming the logs into lumber is the first step of almost all woodworking activities. This process is most often achieved by use of a sawmill. It's a multi-step process that prepares the wood for drying and further transformation into furniture, musical instruments, or artisanal wood products. There are many different types of sawmills, but one of the most popular, especially in remote forest areas, is a portable band sawmill. Another popular option is a chain sawmill, which is sometimes referred to as an Alaska mill. Milling is a critical step in the transformation of most wood products, and it's important to break down the log in the way that will yield the best quality wood for your intended market. At the end of the day, the strategy and techniques you employ in milling each log should maximize yield and minimize waste, providing lumber that can be used most efficiently by the woodworkers who will produce a finished product, adding the greatest value to each harvested tree. My name is John Curtis. I am Vice President of Greenwood. I live in Mexico and work with forest communities. And I've been with Scott for many years. And we together we've been to Peru and Honduras. And now we're here in Puerto Rico working on this very interesting project. And we're very happy to be here. After a hurricane event, a wide variety of downed trees become available. The origin of the tree will determine some of the log's characteristics. Trees, for example, that are sourced from the plantation, a natural forest, or an urban area will differ in trunk length, wood quality, and accessibility. While plantation logs are straight and less dense, natural forest logs will have longer trunks but are less accessible. While plantation harvested logs are maintained to be straight, clean, and ideal for the development of wood product, rescued urban logs often have unique characteristics that woodworkers should be aware of. Rescued urban logs may contain metal debris, such as nails. They also may have insect damage from being in contact with the ground for extended periods. After a hurricane, the most important steps in rescuing logs are to identify which ones are actually worth milling. Next, the ends should be sealed and the logs should be elevated in a shaded area to protect them from direct sunlight, insects, and moisture. While rescued urban logs come with their challenges, their often unique characteristics tell an interesting story of the life of the tree. After rescuing any log, the first step is to plan the dimensions required for your project. There are standard dimensions of the lumber created in the milling process, depending on the project at hand. For example, when making furniture, the standard is to cut lumber that measures four quarter, five quarter, six quarter, and eight quarter, which translates to one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, etc. To prepare your log for milling, you must first remove the bark and use a metal detector to locate metal that might damage the saw. Afterwards, clean up the ends of the log, which allows you to analyze the log for best yield. And finally, position the log for your first cut. Before milling your log into lumber, prepare your sawmill equipment by checking the gas, oil, and coolant supply. Then check the tension and sharpness of the blade. Also, be sure to clear obstacles from the work area and make sure you're wearing the proper safety equipment.
There are several different milling techniques, each with their own benefits. The most popular milling technique is through and through milling, sometimes referred to as flat sawing. Through and through milling is the most common technique because it's the easiest and the fastest way to saw a log. This technique produces the most variety of grain patterns, although there is more shrinkage and movement in half of the board. And this technique produces the lowest value per board foot, but the highest yield. Another popular technique is quarter sawing. Quarter sawing is a favorable milling technique because it yields higher quality boards. These boards are more stable because they shrink less across the width. Also, quarter sawing produces less variation in grain pattern. While quarter sawing requires more work and produces a lower wood yield, the resulting boards are of higher value. Finally, the radial sawing technique produces the highest value per board foot. The grain pattern is the most uniform, but depending on the species, can be quite spectacular. However, this technique requires the most time and effort because additional equipment is needed. This technique also has the lowest wood yield. Uh, it's also important to note that quarter sawing and radial sawing techniques require the highest quality logs. I'm not an artisan, but a lot of what motivates me is supplying artisans with the raw material. And this is some of the highest quality raw material that there is. And so it gives it a great satisfaction. And uh, that's why it's my favorite technique. But uh, it is a lot more work. <laughs> Hurricanes are an extreme climate event that have great effects on trees and forests. The 2017 hurricanes in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands left hundreds of thousands of fallen tropical hardwood trees. Much of this valuable wood was lost. The experience raised awareness of the need for training and capacity building in the wood industry in order to make the best use of the wood for local economic and cultural benefits. Milling is a key step in the journey from a fallen tree to a high-value wood product.